we know that machines help us in doing lot of work. For example, machines help us lifting heavier objects. For example, here the man is lifting these heavy boxes by using a simple machine like an inclined plane. Machines also help us in moving a long distance by applying a smaller effort. For example, the scissors cut the paper or any cloth by applying a small effort on the handles and the blades move much longer. Also, while cycling, the pedals are moved for a shorter distance and in corresponding to that, the wheels of the bicycle move a longer distance. So, machines help us in many ways. We have also learned three important terms related to machines. Firstly, what is the advantage of using machines? That is defined by its mechanical advantage. How much the machine moves in doing the work? That is defined by its velocity ratio. Also, what is the efficiency of a machine? How efficient is it? That is defined by the efficiency of the machine. Let's revise these three terms and try to find a relationship among these three terms. Firstly, mechanical advantage as you know is load by effort. And we know both these terms are related to force. Therefore, it does not have any unit. We also know there might be three different conditions in which the load might be greater than effort or the load might be equal to effort or the load might be lesser than effort. Now, according to these various conditions, the mechanical advantage also varies. For example, it can be greater than one where we are applying smaller effort to overcome larger load. That is the load is greater than effort. Mechanical advantage can be equal to 1 in some cases like in seesaw we had seen where the load is equal to effort. Also the mechanical advantage of some machines can be lesser than 1 where load is less than effort. Now how much distance the machine moves in doing a work is defined by its velocity ratio. Now you know velocity ratio is the ratio between the displacement of effort by the displacement of load. That is how much distance the effort is being moved in order to move the load. So it's a ratio of the displacement of effort by the displacement of load. Again, since both the terms are in displacement, it does not have any unit. Just like mechanical advantage, velocity ratio can also vary under these three conditions. That is, when the displacement of effort is greater than displacement of load, that time the velocity ratio would be greater than 1. Also, when the displacement of effort is equal to the displacement of load, the velocity ratio, as you can understand from this expression, it will be equal to 1. Also, when displacement of effort is lesser than displacement of load, that is, we move the effort for a shorter distance in order to move the uh, load for a longer distance. Like in the scissors, the velocity ratio is less than 1 and these type of machines are known as speed multipliers. We have learnt about the efficiency of machine, that is, how much work the machine does in moving the load. That is expressed by the work output, that is the work done by the machine in moving the load, divided by the work input, that is the work we are putting in the machine. Now we know efficiency is expressed in, as a percentage. So this entire expression is multiplied into 100 to obtain the percentage of efficiency of a machine. Similarly, it does not have any unit because we are dividing work in the numerator as well as in the denominator. Now look at this diagram. Here the man is using a straight bar in order to move a heavier stone or a load. So the man is applying effort in a downward direction 
it can be denoted by f e and the load here is the stone is being moved up and it can be denoted by f l now we know that work output is the work done on the load by the machine and work input is work done by the effort so you know from your previous classes that work is equal to force into displacement so if we have to find out the work output of a machine the work output will be the force which is applied on the load into the displacement which is moved by the load so the work output can be written as load into displacement of load now load can be written as fl that is the force which is applied on the load into displacement that is how much distance the load moves now this fl can also be written as l that is for load now for work input that that is how much effort we are giving to move the machine that can be written as effort in, into displacement of effort now effort you know is the force that we are applying that is fe into the distance moved by the effort or the displacement of effort which can be written as d e now this fe can be generally or simply written as e for effort so work output is load into displacement of load and work input is effort into displacement of effort so efficiency can be rewritten like this that is work output is load into displacement of load divided by work input is effort into displacement of effort see we have written it like this now this can be further simplified as load by effort into we separate out this term as dl by de that is the ratio of displacement of load by displacement of effort or this can be written as 1 by this can be written as 1 by de by dl now are these terms similar to you me familiar to you now are these terms familiar for you well yes load by effort we know is the mechanical advantage of a machine and de by dl that is displacement of effort by displacement of load we know is the velocity ratio so how can you rewrite efficiency efficiency can be rewritten as mechanical advantage or you can write as ma divided by velocity ratio or you can write as vr see efficiency is mechanical advantage by velocity ratio so we have successfully found out a relationship between efficiency mechanical advantage and velocity ratio now for an ideal machine where resistive forces do not appear like friction the efficiency is equal to 1 or you can say it's equal to 100% if the efficiency is equal to 1 then mechanical advantage and velocity ratio should be same that is mechanical advantage and velocity ratio are equal in case of ideal machine but you know in practical machine we need to overcome the force of friction therefore for practical machine efficiency is generally lesser than 1 or lesser than 100% so if efficiency is less than 1 then the ratio of mechanical advantage by velocity ratio should also be less than 1 so in such cases the mechanical advantage is lesser than velocity ratio so for any practical machine always remember that the mechanical advantage is lesser than the velocity ratio now let's solve a sum here the velocity ratio and mechanical advantage is given to us 
the velocity ratio is given to be 8 and the mechanical advantage is given to be 4. We need to find out the efficiency of the machine. So you know the efficiency of a machine is equal to mechanical advantage by the velocity ratio. And you know generally efficiency is expressed as a percentage. So we can write into 100 and the entire term can be expressed as a percentage. So substituting these values in this expression we get 4 divided by 8 into 100 which is equal to 50%. So the efficiency of the given machine is 50%.